So now that we've got this motion map, our last step is to make the position versus um, time graph, or the position versus clock, clock reading graph, and to describe this motion. One thing that's a little weird about this position versus clock reading graph is that the zero point needs to be somewhere other than right here. That is, I'm going to actually put the zero um, for position um, in the middle of the graph. And I'm going to label the positive part of the graph here um, with positive 100 and 200 and the negative part of the graph here, negative 100 and negative 200. This is still a consistent scale from zero, but I'm able to show both positive positions and negative positions. That's important because my graph ends up in the negative position part of the number line. I need to include those negative numbers somewhere. These position numbers are negative. Um, and I need to label my time axis also. I'm going to label it right here. We'll call this 5 seconds and we'll call this 10 seconds to give us enough um, room on that axis. That makes this 1, 2, 3, 4. You don't have to label those if you don't want to. So my job is basically to put this data from the data table or from the motion map. It's the same data on the actual graph. So I can tell at a, at a clock reading of 0 seconds, the object is at a position of 100 centimeters. And then the position increases by 50 centimeters um, for the next 3 seconds. It then stays at a constant value for 3 seconds. So notice this is 250, 250, 250, 250. That position stays constant on that graph. And then the position changes by 100. So for 7 seconds, the value is 150. For 8 seconds, the value is 50. And then notice this is where the graph goes into the negative part of the graph. This position is actually negative 50 and it goes continues to negative 150. If I want to, um, if I think that this pattern looks consistent, I can actually draw a trend line through the different parts of this pattern. Um, this isn't exactly connecting the dots. If I still had some uncertainty here, I would like still draw a trend line, but I'm following the pattern and I'm able to say, okay, look, this, this slope looks positive when Miss Gabriel was moving positive. This slope looks like it's zero when Miss Gabriel's not moving, and it looks like it's negative and steeper than when she was moving fast in the negative direction. Um, so my last step is gonna be to write a description of this here. Um, I'll go ahead and write it like this. If you want to write your own description, you can do that, but I will, um, I'll write something that works. Let's start like this. We can say, Miss Gabriel starts at an initial position of 100 centimeters. and moves slowly in the positive direction for three seconds. Notice there are three dots with that arrow. So me saying three seconds corresponds to these three dots when she's actually moving slowly in the positive direction. Um, she then stops for three seconds and her position doesn't change. Sorry, my bad. And her position doesn't change. That's this part of the graph right here. That's this part of the motion map here when her position isn't changing at all. And then lastly, I'm going to describe this last part. Um, she then switches direction 
end moves quicker in the negative direction um, for another if we want to figure out how much time she moves in the negative direction for we need to say okay she's moving for one second two seconds three seconds four seconds um, I'm actually gonna add for another four seconds or more because we don't know what happens after this graph ends. Um, maybe she stopped, maybe she kept moving. Um, we don't particularly know. When we come back to CVM 10, we're gonna talk about how we can look for how the, the uh, description and the graph and the data table and the motion map are all consistent with each other. Checking that consistency is going to be very, very important to us as we go forward.